The Story of Anise and the Barb by Ken Finn He had seen God. Well, not exactly God, but the nearest thing that anybody could understand to God. And to be so close by, quite close to his hometown of Tabriz, and to be locked up in his house like some sort of criminal? He could think of nothing else. He didn't want to eat, he didn't want to sleep, Even his wife and infant child were forgotten in his longing for one chance to look upon that face, the new messenger of God. His family thought he'd gone completely mad, and if the son of someone so well known as his father were to have gone mad, it would be a disgrace for the whole family. So he was locked away. His uncle knew it was true, but even he could not change his father's mind. It's a bit like knowing that Jesus is alive now, today, quite close by. And your family say, of course you can't just go off and see him. Don't be silly. Now you settle down and just forget all about that. You'll be fine, dear. They just didn't understand. He would sometimes spend all day in tears, sometimes all night, just longing for one chance to look upon that face. The face of the new messenger of God. A young man stood crying by his window His gaze looked far across the land A prisoner within his own home A love his father could never understand He'd seen the bright light shining The gates of God was open wide He knew his life would have no meaning Until he was by his beloved side Such a well-respected man His family thought it madness now because To leave behind his wife and infant child Following the merchant of Shiraz He'd seen the bright light shining gates of God was open wide. He knew his life would have no meaning until he was by his beloved side. He must have fainted. Because when he looked up, there was the barb, looking at him. Rejoice, the barb said. For the hour is approaching, when in this very city I shall be suspended before the eyes of the multitude, and shall fall victim to the fire of the enemy. I shall choose no one but you to share with me the cup of martyrdom. Was it true? Would he really be with the barb? Rest assured that this promise which I give you shall be fulfilled. Well... That was it. The Bob had promised him. He couldn't believe it. He was totally changed. He didn't want to go rushing off anywhere. His family thought he'd been cured. He was now happy to stay at home. Happy to be at home and waiting. He wanted to dance around and tell everyone. But his uncle said that they still would not understand. So, he was just waiting. Happy and waiting. And as it turned out, he didn't have long to wait at all. A few weeks later, the word was going round that the barb was once again coming to Tabriz, this time under armed guard. Some said to be executed. As soon as he heard this, he could think of nothing else. He pushed his way through the crowd, and as the barb came by, he threw himself down at his feet, and he grabbed hold of the bottom of his coat. Nothing would make him let go. 
and then he heard a voice. Arise. It was the same voice he'd heard in his vision. Rest assured that you will be with me. Tomorrow you shall witness what God hath decreed. Get him away! shouted one of the guards. But everyone seemed to be watching. The whole crowd went silent. So an announcement was made to everybody. Anybody who wants to be with this person will be executed with him tomorrow. He was looking directly at Anise, someone they knew from the town. Whatever family he's from. But far from making him let go, he clung on even more firmly to the hem of that coat. The crowd seemed to hold their breath. What was going to happen? Anise remained there. Two more people in that crowd were so moved that they came forward to give themselves up to join that condemned party. The soldiers started to get very worried. What if hundreds and hundreds of people all started to show this devotion to the Bob? So they were quickly whisked away into the barracks and locked up in one of the rooms there. Anise and the two who'd come forward, the Bob and his secretary, were locked away in the room. That night, it seemed like the Bob could hardly wait. Now that it seemed like release from this life was so close by. Tomorrow will be the day of my martyrdom. Would that one of you will now rise and with his own hands end my life. For I prefer to be slain by the hand of a friend rather than that of the enemy. You can imagine. They were horrified at the thought of any harm coming to the Bob. The man for whom they would gladly give their own lives. But Anise stepped forward to do exactly as the Barb had said. They couldn't allow this, and threw themselves on him. And there must have been chaos in the room. But before you knew it, the Barb had eventually restored calm. He turned to them and said, This same youth, who has risen to comply with my wish, will together with me suffer martyrdom. Him I choose to share with me its crown. He said, Tomorrow is the day. Would the one of you might end it now Killed by a friend is a better way I thought they couldn't bear somehow His companion arose He didn't hesitate He'd do as his master chose Whatever was his fate Cries of anguish filled the room No, this could never be Oh, but quiet it will be soon I choose this same one to share with me His companion arose He didn't hesitate He'd do as his master chose Whatever was his fate Whatever The next morning, the guard who was to take them to have their death warrant signed by the local muller was getting very impatient waiting for the barb as he talked with his secretary. So eventually, he just dragged him out of the room while they were mid-conversation. The barb turned to him and, more like a king than a prisoner who was about to be executed, he said, Not until I've said to him all those things I wish to say can any earthly power silence me. Though all the world may be armed against me, yet they are powerless to deter me from fulfilling to the last word my intention. The card must have thought he was mad. He said, No, you're coming with me. They put metal bands around their necks and put a rope through the band so that they could lead them through the streets like some sort of animal. People were throwing rotten vegetables, shouting at them and jeering. When they got to the house of the muller, They must have been very worried by the barb, because they refused to see him. They already had his death warrant signed, waiting. But Anise, this was a young lad they'd seen grow up in the town. They all knew his family. They knew him. He was brought in to see the mullers. And they said, all you have to do is deny this belief and we'll let you go. Are you mad? And he said, I'm not mad. Rather, such an accusation should be brought against you for condemning to death no less a person than the promised Cain. But that wasn't the only thing they had planned. 
let him look upon his child. So his infant child was brought in to stand before him. And he turned to his child, and all he said was, I commit you to the care of God. To leave behind my beautiful child You'll not follow where I'm going I love you more than I can tell What lies beyond there is no knowing But waves can't be still There's a new life they can't kill I'm so sorry I can't stay I'm flying far, far away be with you even there I commit you to God's tender care there's such a joy within my soul where it leads I must follow and while you are all my life for I'll never see tomorrow but waves can't be still there's a new life they can't kill I'm so sorry I can't stay I'm flying far, far away I'll be with you even there I commit you to God's tender care He looked upon his face To see him once he heard my plea from a single cup to share For I am his anise But waves can't be still There's a new life they can't kill I'm so sorry I can't stay I'm flying far, far away I'll be with you even there I commit you to God's tender care. They were taken straight from there back to the barracks, where they were to be executed. One of the prophecies about the promised Kaim was that he would be killed by Muslims. So the Christian regiment of Sam Khan was given the orders to carry out the execution. 750 riflemen. Sam Khan was very distressed by this, as he believed the Barb to be a very holy man. He turned to the Barb and said, If your cause be the cause of truth, surely you will find a way to relieve me of this perplexity to shed your blood. But the Barb replied, Follow your instruction. And if your intention is pure, the Almighty will surely be able to relieve you of your perplexity. He must have thought it a very strange answer, and thought, well, okay, I guess we'll shoot you then. The bar was taken, a nail was driven into the wall of the barrack square, and he was tied up and suspended from that nail. A niece, wearing spotless white, was tied up and suspended next to the barb. A line of 250 riflemen was lined up, and behind them, a second line of 250, and behind them, a third line, also of 250. In that part of Iran, the houses have flat roofs. So the surrounding rooftops were crowded with hundreds and hundreds of people, all watching to see this execution, waiting to see what was happening. The order was given, FIRE! The first 250 rifles fired, and smoke billowed out to fill the barracks. Then the second line, fire! Another 250 rifles roared, more smoke. And then the third line, fire! And the barracks were full of smoke. Eventually, the smoke began to clear. And there was Anise, just standing there. The bullets had completely shattered the ropes. But Anise looked untouched. Not even a speck of dust on his clothes. And the barb. The barb had completely disappeared. 
There was confusion everywhere. People started shouting, screaming. Some saying he'd gone up to heaven. Where was he? What had happened? No one knew. Sam Khan felt this was clear to him. He'd done his duty, what was promised. And he was marching his regiment out of there straight away. He didn't care even if it meant they would shoot him too. So the Christian soldiers marched right out of there straight away. People were sent to search everywhere for the barb to find out what had happened. Eventually, the same guard who had so rudely pulled him away from his conversation that very morning unlocked the room where the barb's secretary was staying. And there, inside, he saw the barb calmly finishing his conversation with his secretary. The barb then turned to the guard and said, You may now proceed to fulfil your intention. I think it must have been a bit too much for that guard, because he just turned around and walked out of there and did not come back. He just left. But the barb was again taken back to the barracks. This time, the Muslim regiment of 750 rifles was assembled to carry out the execution. As he was about to be suspended on the wall, the barb turned to the crowd and, referring to Anis, he said, Had you believed in me, a wayward generation, every one of you would have followed the example of this youth. He was again suspended on the nail in the barrack square. Anis, suspended next to him, asked that his head be laid on the chest of the barb as if to shield him from those bullets. Again, 250 soldiers lined up, 250 behind them, and 250 behind them. You could hear a pin drop. Everybody was holding their breath. Once again, the order was given. Fire! A great cloud of smoke, and then the second row, fired! And the third row, fire! The smoke filled the square. But this time, a great wind seemed to come out of nowhere and blew the smoke away. And there were the bodies of the Barb and Anise, completely shattered. All except for the face of the Barb, which seemed miraculously untouched. A serene smile left on his lips. But the wind grew stronger and stronger. A great dust storm was blown into the sky, and great black clouds started to close in above them. It became darker and darker until it was almost pitch black. And the great dust storm rolled in all around the place from midday, when the barb had been executed, right through until midnight. The sky was turning black Oh, what had they done? God had seen them, everyone Had they killed his promised one? Now everyone could see Was just as he had said Shattered bodies, now quite dead Their youthful cages, they had fled When execution passed him by They thought he never could be killed Prophecy was fulfilled, and hearts and souls were chilled. Now they trembled there with fear, and fury filled the sky. Hear the storm and people cry, rob them of the sun on stood and stared 
no one asked the reason why As dust was thrown into the sky And creation seemed to cry Now everyone could see Was just as he had said Shattered bodies now quite dead Their youthful cages they had fled In truth, the strange tale continues. The bodies of Anise and the Barb were ordered to be left in a ditch for the beasts. But they were whisked away somehow, and kept in hiding in one place and another for fifty years or so, until they eventually came to rest. But that's a story for another day. The bodies of Anise and the Barb eventually came to rest on God's holy mountain on Mount Carmel in the Holy Land. And now there's a beautiful shrine erected with a golden dome and white marble surroundings overlooking the bay from atop the mountain. And if you ever get the chance to visit Haifa and see the Shrine of the Barb for yourself, you will see it's somewhere very, very special. Stop. You have been listening to the story of Anis and the Barb, written by Ken Finn. This version was recorded and produced by Anis Finn. It was narrated by Louis Finn, 
with the voice of the Barb, played by Becky Finn, and the voice of Anis, played by Sarah Finn. The music was written by Ken Finn, with Queen of Carmel, written by Jeannie Murday. All tracks were arranged by Will Finn and Rosie Calvert, and were performed by Will Finn, Rosie Calvert, and Louis Finn. This recording is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial International Public Licence, version 4. Copyright 2019.